We have a big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone in just the next couple days. The last time we saw this one, it brought us a G2 level solar storm and brought Aurora clear down deep into mid latitudes. What's it going to do this time? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week is just about to get exciting. We've come down from one coronal hole and some fast wind from that, and we're about to get hit by some more fast wind from this much larger coronal hole. It's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or two. And the last time we saw this coronal hole and it sent us some fast solar wind, it bumped us up to G2 storm levels, which was fantastic because it brought Aurora clear down to mid latitudes, and the storm lasted easily over 24 to 48 hours before things finally calm down. So Aurora photographers, you should definitely get your batteries charged. Things lo are looking up for you. Now, as far as amateur radio and emergency responders go, well, you can see the disc is still completely spotless. We have very low solar flux right now. And with a spotless sun, it looks like things are going to stay that way for quite some time. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. We are definitely flatlined here. You can also tell that we are still in eclipse season with these periodic drop-offs. Don't worry, this is not anything that the sun is doing. This is when the moon actually goes between the spacecraft and the sun and so it blocks it so we get these little drop-offs every now and again. But hey, with a spotless sun there's not really much to see anyway so we're not really missing anything. And Unfortunately, these conditions will easily continue over the next week and possibly longer. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week we've been bumping between unsettled conditions and active conditions. As a matter of fact, on the 16th we got hit by a pocket of fast solar wind that bumped us up to active conditions kind of on and off for the few days that followed that. And we brought Aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. There were some decent shows in the United States, as a matter of fact. But then things settled down a little bit, and until about the 24th, that's when we actually got hit again. This is by the smaller pocket of fast solar wind that didn't really last all that long. As a matter of fact, there might have even been a little bit of a solar storm embedded in it. It was kind of hard to tell. And that bumped us up to active conditions, but now we've kind of dropped back down again. Things have been kind of quiet, but it's the calm before the storm because we're going to get hit with that big uh, pocket of fast wind from that massive coronal hole that's rotating in the Earth strike zone. And so expect in the next few days to see some red on this chart. So Aurora photographers, get ready. And the last couple of solar storms we've had have brought some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world. And in my previous forecast, I mentioned that I wasn't able to show all of the aurora photos and that I would promise to show more now. And here it is. I'm going to show you a bunch more now. In fact, some of these shots are from the last time that big coronal hole that we're about to get some fast wind from, that last time that one actually rotated in through the Earth strike zone. So hopefully this will get you aurora photographers all excited and ready because you might get some more shots like like this one here from Sweden and Aurora was seen in the Shetland in the UK and as we cross over the Atlantic it's been seen in Iceland beautiful coronas in Iceland and as we cross over to the Western Hemisphere it's been seen in many places in Canada here's Manitoba and it was seen in British Columbia it was seen in Saskatchewan and in Alberta, and it's even dipped into the United States. It was seen in Minnesota, and that G2 level solar storm from last time brought Aurora clear down to Colorado, and it also gave us some beautiful views of Aurora Australis. Here are several shots from New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially backsided monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun 
pretty much from the side. And if you look at Stereo's west limb view, you can see that dark hole. That's the big coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. And then behind it, you can kind of see in the southern hemisphere, you see some bright regions, and then they kind of fizzle out a little bit. We had some high hopes that maybe some of that would develop and turn into sunspots, but nope, looks like things have kind of died out a little bit. The nice thing is that after another small coronal hole, if you look, you can see some new regions, bright regions rotating into Stereo's view, and the one that's really far south in the southern hemisphere, it looks like that one might actually be a sunspot from cycle 25. So we're anxiously awaiting for those su sunspots to rotate into Earth view so we can get a better view and see whether or not that might be true. And also, hopefully, boost the solar flux just a little bit for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase, with the new moon being on the 20th. So you night sky watchers, now's a chance to catch those dim objects in the sky and possibly some decent aurora shots with this coming solar storm. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from the massive coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. As a matter of fact, a 75% chance of major storm conditions starting around the 27th and easily going through the 29th before things begin to settle down a bit. At mid-latitudes, we're looking at minor storm conditions at least, but you know, last time we actually made it to a G2 level storm so who knows? But active conditions should start right around the 27th, and things should continue to be active, maybe even storming uh, in through the weekend before things finally begin to calm down at the beginning of next week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. I know I sound like a broken record, but everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, which means there's no risk for radio blackouts, and this should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Unfortunately, it also means that we, our solar flux continues to be in the mid-60s. This is bad news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Your daytime propagation is going to be in the dumper it's going to be pretty poor. And with this solar storm that's coming, gosh, it's going to make it even worse. So you're not going to get any decent propagation probably on, on the day side or the night side in through this weekend. So I hope there's no contests. At any rate, hopefully things will begin to get better as the new week uh, emerges and things begin to settle down just a little bit. Now also because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is penetrating a bit more intensely than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is just about to get exciting. We have a massive coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. It's going to be sending us some fast solar wind here in the next day or so. And when it hits, it could bump us up to storm levels. In fact, if it's anything like what we saw the last time this coronal hole came around, it could bump us up to G2 solar storm levels. So your aurora photographers, definitely get your batteries charged. We could see some aurora cleared down deep into mid-latitudes, and it could easily last in through the weekend before things begin to calm down. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things aren't looking quite so good for you. We have a spotless sun right now, and we also have the solar flux down in the mid-60s. This means poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. And unfortunately, when this solar storm hits, you're not going to have great radio propagation on Earth's night side either. So you're just going to have to kind of deal with things until things begin to calm down at the end of the week. Thank goodness there's no real hurricanes or any major emergency emergencies right now. Let's hope. Let's hope it stays that way. Now, as far as uh, GPS reception is concerned, well, you GPS users on Earth's day side, you should get some pretty decent reception. But as soon as you get near the dawn dust terminators, or of course, anywhere near Aurora, once that solar storm hits, things could get a bit wacky. So don't trust your GPS easily in through the weekend. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.